now it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to help equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a Christian perspective on the beginning of the universe is astrophysicist Dr. Jeff Swearing. Welcome back, Jeff. Hi, Chris. It's always a joy being here. Now, you're the author of a brand new book called Escaping the Beginning, which is about the beginning of the universe. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an aspect of what we call our testable creation model strategy here, right. uh, reasons to believe. I thought it would be helpful if we could kind of look at what are the key features of that aspect of our creation model as it pertains to the origin of the universe. Yeah, well, it's, you know, we've got this uh, idea that the Bible actually describes what the universe looks like. And so as we look at it scientifically, they ought to match. And there's kind of three or four features that play out in there. One is that the universe is very regularly and orderly, that, uh, you know, the scientific terms that the laws of physics are constant, if you will. Uh, but it's very much that the universe has a beginning uh, and that it's expanding and that it's undergoing some form of decay. Uh, so those are kind of the three or four central features of, of our creation model. So when we look out into the created order, th those are sort of four observations that we see mm -hmm. that have been pretty rigorously looked at by scientists. Well, now, and, and the, the part of that that's cool is that that's kind of a central characteristic of Big Bang cosmology. And, you know, people can argue about whether there's a true beginning or not, and there's an interesting discussion there, but that's what Big Bang cosmology largely says. So. Okay, so then when we look at scripture, let's try to match some of those mm -hmm. things up. Why is it that Christians think that the universe has a beginning? Well, if for no other reason that the book kind of the Bible starts off in the beginning, you know, okay. that there's in the beginning, God created the universe, the heavens and the earth. Uh, and that idea is echoed throughout scripture. You know, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And Hebrews talks about that, that idea that uh, the universe is contingent upon God's creation. It began to exist. It hasn't just been here forever. Seems to pervade just throughout scripture. So That the universe is not eternal. Mm -hmm, right. It had a beginning and that time itself had a beginning. Right, yes. So, okay, so that is one feature of the model. Now, what would be our biblical support for the idea that the universe is expanding? Well, the as I've read through scripture, there's kind of one attribute that is used to describe creation more than any of the others, actually, and it's this idea that the heavens are being stretched out. Uh, you know, and there are multiple biblical authors that reference this. There's Jeremiah, there's uh, uh, Isaiah, talking about this stretching out of the heavens. And I don't know exactly that the ancient biblical authors were thinking of, oh yeah, that must mean expanding universe. But that terminology is very provocative given that we know the universe is expanding. And it was an idea that uh, it really predates a lot of what people thought about the universe for a long time. And just to kind of tease that out a little further, if the Holy Spirit is helping to kind of supernaturally inspire mm -hmm. those biblical authors. The Holy Spirit knows exactly how the yes. universe was created. <laughs> Maybe he gave them that word picture to describe the universe because that's actually what he knew we would discover later. Yeah, and I kind of, you know, my, my vision or my framework for thinking about that is that, you know, clearly the biblical authors were talking to the people at their time, using the language that they understood and, and drawing on that. But I kind of liken it to a teacher that, uh, you know, is teaching, knows calculus, but is teaching to five and six-year-olds. They're going to use language that they understand, but they're going to say it in a way that later on they're going to go, oh, they, they said things in just a, a way that resonates and, and matches what they're going to find as they go in their further studies. So. Builds the solid foundation. Yes. Okay. Now let's talk about kind of this third aspect of our creation model when it comes to the origin of the universe, and that is that the universe is somehow um, decaying over time. Mm -hmm. Does the Bible address that issue? It is. You know, there are passages in Romans 8 where it talks about God subjecting creation to futility. Um, you know, and we talk as much as that idea of the beginning being there, an equally important aspect of Christian theology is that there's a new heaven and a new earth, that this earth, this universe is temporary. And so the idea that there's death in here, that there's animals and plants dying, and even, you know, after humanity sinned that we die, that there's a temporary decaying, it's, it's, it's going away and it won't be forever, 
idea that, again, it seems very much a, an integral part of the way scripture talks about creation. And so that's kind of a natural idea that, there, that it's decaying and it's not meant to be permanent, it's temporary. So It's certainly consistent with what we observe in science. Exactly, exactly okay. the case. Now, as you engage with non-Christians, how do you find this testable creation model strategy when you talk about the origin of the universe and you talk about these three key features of our model, how do non-Christians usually respond to that? You know, there are some that say, well, that's just old flowery language. It doesn't mean what you want. But I, I just find it remarkable that the way the Bible describes creation and the way our scientific discoveries describe creation are as remarkably consistent as they are. And, and I think as I've been able to talk and interact with people when they recognize, hey, there's a, a testability to scripture that things could have been otherwise, but scripture accurately describes creation, it does give them a moment to pause and think about, well, maybe there is something more here. And that gives an opportunity to delve more into what the Bible has to say about things. Yeah, that testability component is really important mm -hmm. because the Bible could have described the universe as eternal. Right. It, it could have described God as being part of this universe or inside the universe. Well, and there are a lot of religious texts where that is the case. Yeah. And so that's the way that it's described being that way. You know, I mean, even in Genesis 1, I find this idea that time is linear. That's, I don't know how much key that is to our creation model, but given how many cultures have this cyclical view of time, and yet the Bible describes this linear view of time, there's ways where it could have been different, but the Bible describes... What we almost see is, well, duh, it's almost got to be that way. It's so common sense to us today, but really it, it has its origins in Scripture. Well, I think that's a helpful way of, of thinking about it because when we're talking to our non-Christian friends, we can draw their attention to these parallels mm -hmm. and at least provoke their thinking a little bit about the harmony between creation and the Bible. It, it really is, and I, and I think science provides that tool because science does have the, that authority where the Bible doesn't for some reason, or you know, at this point in time, but if you can say, hey, science points to describe something that looks remarkably like what the Bible has described, that kind of transfers some of that authority to the person who sees science as an authority. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. And I do want to mention once again, Jeff's new book, Escaping the Beginning. You can check that out on our website at reasons.org.